Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since the 1970s, the Boeing 747 jet airliner has been one of the most recognizable and widely used aircraft in the world. However, few are aware of the many specially modified aircraft that Boeing has developed using this 747 frame. Take the Boeing E-4 Advanced Airborne Command Post, for instance. This massive plane is designed specifically to act as a command and control military aircraft for the U.S. Air Force. Essentially, this makes it a survivable mobile command center for the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, and other political and military VIPs in the event of a crisis. As you might expect, this aircraft has a number of highly unique capabilities. First and foremost, they can stay aloft for more than 150 hours at a time. utilizing Air Force tankers for mid-air refueling. It can operate with a crew of up to 112 people. And has some of the most advanced communications arrays of any modern plane. It is also able to survive an electromagnetic pulse or EMP blast and carries a wide array of anti-aircraft countermeasures. As you can see here, the interior of the E-4B is quite unlike most other aircraft. At 231 feet long, there is a surprising amount of space inside the plane which has multiple decks for various purposes, a galley for food preparation, and a lower deck with massive water supply tanks. The cockpit is heavily modified to facilitate the plane's advanced avionics and power systems. At the same time, the various decks feature special communications areas whereby the president and military leaders can direct troops and talk to foreign leaders from anywhere in the world. As advanced as the aircraft is, the E-4B still utilizes a number of analog instruments, as these have better EMP protection than digital systems. The latest models even feature special shielding against heat and nuclear effects. The E-4 project started in the early 1970s, the very height of the Cold War. At the time, the risk of nuclear attack was considered far more real, so the idea of a mobile command center that could spend up to a week in the air made perfect sense. Today, the E-4B fleet is still kept on alert at all times. Still, the Federal Emergency Management Agency often uses the aircraft to get emergency crews to and from disaster areas, like those caused by Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Opal. At least one E-4B is kept on at Andrews Air Force Base and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, fully crewed, manned, and ready for action. Another unique Cold War airplane designed by Boeing is the E-3 Sentry. Designed as an Airborne Early Warning and Control System, or Airborne Early Warning and Control Squadron, AWACS.
the E-3 provides all-weather surveillance, command, and communications for the U.S. Air Force. First introduced in the mid-1970s, this heavily modified Boeing 707 is easy to distinguish thanks to its massive radar dome, which sits near the rear of the fuselage. Over the years, these aircraft have played a crucial role in directing aircraft against enemy forces while providing strategic intel to military leaders. The Rotodome Radar Array allows the E-3 to detect, identify, and track airborne enemy forces from extreme distances, allowing for more precise reconnaissance and interception missions. The aircraft is 152 feet in length and can reach speeds of just over 500 miles per hour. On an average mission, the E-3 will carry a crew of four to fly the plane and another 13 to 20 to operate all its advanced tracking technology. AWACS aircraft are utilized all over the world by the United States military and its allies. These aircraft are highly complex and require regular maintenance in order to remain mission ready. Each system must be properly evaluated before every mission to ensure they are in working order, from the avionics, to the landing gear, to the radar. Though it is not a high altitude aircraft, the E-3 carries an ample amount of liquid oxygen for the cabin and crew. The E-3 is capable of staying aloft for more than eight hours without refueling, but in the event, a mission calls for it to provide intel for longer periods of time. It can partner with a refueling tanker to extend its flight time. The interior of the E-3 is specifically designed to communicate as much information as possible, as quickly as possible. The rotating 30-foot diameter radar dome is constantly feeding data to the mission crew members who need to relay that to the command. Other aircraft and troops on the ground simultaneously. The cabin area resembles any ground-based mission command center with teams of men and women working to provide weather information, battlefield data, and early warning of potential enemy actions to necessary parties. By putting the radar in the air, the U.S. military is able to avoid much of the ground clutter that causes interference. In short, the E-3 can see further and with far more accuracy than most ground-based radar systems. Though considered the predecessor to the EC-121 in many ways, the Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye is still in service around the world. Its main advantage over the E-3 is that it's small enough to operate from an aircraft carrier, thus giving naval operations the same airborne early warning benefits. The E-2 is easily recognizable thanks to its rotating radar dome, which is 24 feet in diameter and covers nearly the entire top of the aircraft, which is just 57 feet in length. The smaller size of the Hawkeye necessitates a more scaled-down crew, which includes a pilot, co-pilot, radar officer, combat information center officer, and aircraft control officer. These men and women use state-of-the-art technology to identify potential threats to the fleet long before they could be seen with traditional tracking methods. One of the Hawkeye's most practical and important aspects is its folding wing system, which allows the 80-foot wings to collapse against the fuselage.
This allows the aircraft to be more easily stored aboard packed aircraft carriers. Though it is hardly the largest aircraft to operate from an aircraft carrier, the launch and recovery of an E-2 Hawkeye takes a lot of coordination from the tower, flight crews, and flight deck personnel. Here, you can clearly see the aircraft's wings folded against the fuselage. They remain this way even as the engines are started and pre-flight checks are performed. Once the plane taxis into position, it is attached to the catabar system with wings fully deployed and launched at up to 130 miles per hour. As with all other carrier-enabled aircraft, pilots must use a tail hook to catch special arresting cables when landing. thus allowing the E-2 to come to a safe and rapid stop. As electronic warfare became more and more prevalent, the U.S. Navy needed a way to remain competitive. This led to the development of the EA-18 Growler, a heavily modified FA-18 Super Hornet designed specifically to participate in electronic warfare scenarios. First introduced in 2006, the Growler performs escort jamming as well as traditional radar jamming and deception missions. Aside from its extensive radar and electronic warfare systems, the Growler also carries a significant number of traditional weapons, like Sidewinder missiles. However, these external hardpoints are often utilized to carry special jamming pods, which help facilitate its electronic warfare and defense mission. The EA-18 contains a number of highly advanced systems, most of which are unique to the aircraft. This means that maintenance technicians must be familiar with various mechanical and electronic aspects of the aircraft to keep it in operational condition. Growlers have also been heavily modified over the years in order to keep up with the ever-changing face of electronic warfare. As impressive as the EA-18 Growler is, it lacks the range and flight time associated with the E-3 or E-4B. This can be solved through the use of external fuel tanks, but these can also affect the overall weight and function of the craft. Fortunately, the EA-18 is fully capable of mid-air refueling using the probe and drogue system. Here you can see an EA-18G drawing fuel from the wing section of a KC-135. Note that this particular aircraft is not fully loaded for combat. Only boasting the ANALQ-218 detection pods on the wingtips. This electronic warfare system is designed for airborne situational awareness and signal intelligence gathering. This means it detects, identifies, locates, and analyzes sources of radio frequency emission, allowing the growler to identify and respond to threats long before they become visible. After all, in this new type of modern warfare, every second counts. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
See you next time. 